Welcome to Family Vlogs and in today's video we are going to talk about tonsillitis. Tonsillitis. We are going to define tonsillitis. We are going to look into details possible causes of tonsillitis. We are going to look at clinical presentation of tonsillitis that is signs and symptoms, laboratory investigations and eventually both medical and surgical management of tonsillitis. Not forgetting complications that may arise towards this tonsillitis if it's not properly managed. Kindly, if you have not subscribed to this channel, hit this red button written subscribe, turn it on for more videos that we'll post and always like, comment and share this our video. Stay with me until the end of this video and put any comment as per this topic of today's welcome. Welcome to Pamli Vlogs and today we are presenting to you tonsillitis causes and management. Definition, we define tonsillitis as inflammation of tonsils in the upper part of the throat. As you can see, both the tonsils are swollen and there are even some whitish patches on both of them. And the below one is the tongue. So, Causes of tonsillitis are common causes are viral infections and about 5 to 40 percent causes are caused by bacterial infections. And group S streptococcus uh, play an important role in the commonest cause of tonsillitis in terms of bacteria. Of course, we have other viral infections that may play a role. Is tonsillitis contagious? Yes, the viruses and bacteria that cause tonsillitis are highly contagious. They pass along by kissing and sharing utensils, food or drinks, coming into close contact with someone who is sick, touching a contaminated, uh, contaminated surface or, and then touching your nose or mouth, inhaling tiny particles that becomes airborne when a sick person sneezes or coughs. So it is very, very important for us to put on mask at all the time to avoid tonsillitis. Signs and symptoms of tonsillitis normally include sore throat or scratchy throat, pain or difficulty in swallowing, red swollen tonsils and throat, whitish spots on your tonsils or white, yellow or gray coating on your tonsils, sometimes bad breath, what we call halitosis, temperature may be high as 38 degrees Celsius, swollen lymph nodes, glands on the sides of your neck below your ear, sometimes still alternating with the hotness of the body, stomach ache or vomiting, that is more common in younger children. Of course, we have three types of tonsillitis. Acute tonsillitis, these symptoms usually last three or four days, but can last up to two weeks. Recurrent tonsillitis, this is when you get tonsillitis several times in a year. Chronic tonsillitis, this is when you have a long time tonsils infection. Diagnosis criteria, we normally use center criteria. It's a common criteria which may be used to identify the likelihood of bacterial infection in adult patient complaining of sore throat. And this is very, very important. Uh, the patient are judged on four criteria, and one is absence of cough, tonsillar exudate, that is which may be ooze, history of fever, tender anterior cervical adenopathy, the modified center criteria also incorporate the patient age, that is age under 15, add one point, age over 44, subtract one point. And this is very important to put into consideration. Now, the center is C, cough, which is absent, or we say can't cough, E for exudate, and for nodes, and T for temperature. And then we add young or old as modified the way we've talked about in the previous slide. So it is very, very important to consider this. And now when we are scoring, uh, the scores may range from one to five. That is negative one to five. 
guidelines for management stats states that negative one zero or one point no antibiotic or throat scratch are necessary risk of strep infection is less than 10 percent two or three points should receive a throat culture and treat with antibiotics if culture is possible that is risk of strep infection 32 percent if three criteria 15 percent if two four or five points consider rapid strep testing and or culture risk of strep infection is 56 percent of course lab will do throat swab for to isolate streptococcus and even complete blood count that is fully mogram to look for any bacteria mostly treatments uh, we consider penicillins are the best antibiotics amoxicillin um, ampicillin penicillin g oxacillin uh, those are most of the antibiotics that we may use surgical intervention that is surgical removal of tonsils it can be both sides or one side that is unilateral or bilateral uh, the procedure is called tonsillectomy tonsillectomy is indicated when there is obstructive sleep apnea breathing difficulties swallowing difficulty especially when you eat meat or other chunky food or an abscess uh, that is not responding to antibiotics complications may be disruption of breathing during sleep that is obstructive sleep apnea peritonsil abscess tonsillar cellulitis rheumatic fever that is inflammatory condition that affects the heart central nervous system joints and skin post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis affecting the kidney and post-streptococcal reaction arthritis affecting majorly at the joints so it's very very important to consider all those because it helps in also managing uh, the patient now uh, rheumatic fever which is inflammatory condition it might be very very serious so we take it into consideration when we are looking at the complications thanks for watching and always like comment share not forgetting to subscribe to family vlogs and also watch our other videos see you in the next video muchas gracias